In this part, we're going to show you how to install the tubing and how to connect the wires. After that, your system will be ready for filling. In order to successfully route the tubing, it is recommended to do some planning before cutting the tubes. It is best that the water block receives the coldest fluid as possible. Therefore, you should connect the radiator's outlet port with the water block's inlet port. This is the best practice, but it's not mandatory. Visualize the tube routes and then measure the distance by trying to fit it into the chassis. You can mark the required lengths with a marker. Before cutting the tube, it is recommended that you leave an additional 2 or 3 centimeters to spare. You can shorten it afterwards. In order to install the tubing onto the compression fittings, you will have to remove the fitting rings by screwing it in counterclockwise direction. Slide the fitting ring along the tube with the threaded side facing the fitting barb. Install the tube on the fitting barb. If needed, you can heat the tube in warm water. Slide the tube over the edge of the fitting as far as it goes. Slide the fitting ring towards the barb and tighten it in clockwise direction as far as it goes. Do not use any tools such as pliers. Repeat this procedure on all the fittings in order to connect the water cooling loop. Make sure that the tube is not bent or twisted too much. This way the coolant will be able to flow without restriction. To safely proceed to filling process, it is mandatory to do the following. Disconnect all power supply connectors in your computer. Plug the EKATX bridging plug to your 24-pin ATX power supply cable, which allows jump-starting your computer. Connect the EK Cable Pump Testing Adapter's SATA power header to your vacant SAT power connector on your power supply. You can use the enclosed power cable extender. The system is now ready for filling.